good evening hope you're doing well hope everything is showing up okay i'm gonna give facebook a couple minutes to let you know that i've gone live and then we'll get started with sunday stampin just making sure that all of my settings are okay and i can see the comments as they come up um if you can let me know if you can see see everything that would be great oh hi Sharon okay thanks for commenting now I know it's working um so I was just trying to figure out how to how to do this again so I took a week off of Sunday stamping because of the long weekend last weekend and so we're back at it this week I hope that this week you were able to settle back into routines, whether or not you were heading back to work or if your kids were heading back to school, hopefully that went well. And hopefully you were able to enjoy the weekend. So I don't know if anyone has done any apple picking or anything fall related yet. I'm still holding on to the last bit of summer. So I'll be doing that later. But if you're into doing any fall crafts or you were setting up your house, for fall let me know what you're up to in the comments um, we are gonna get started with Sunday Stampin um, tonight I have a technique sort of a stamping technique that I want to show you how to do cards and so that will be something a little different tonight um, but before we get started I just want to let you know about a couple of classes I have coming up so I'm just gonna flip my camera view here and you can see Okay, so that, oh, Sharon, you went to Heman's. You know what? I was thinking of going to Heman's yesterday and I just didn't make enough time for it. So my plan is to go to Heman's next weekend. I saw someone actually who bought a bunch of pumpkins and stuff to decorate their porch and they looked really nice. So hopefully you were able to find something there similar. That's, I know I've only been to Heman's once this year. So it's the first time ever, <laughs> which seems silly, but that's okay. Hi Kelly, hope you're doing well. Okay, so for the stamp stack class, this is the first of three Christmas stamp stack classes. The first one is happening Friday, September 24th. Today is the very last day to RSVP for this class and I actually only have one spot left. So if you're interested in this class, please let me know tonight. Uh, the class fee is $30 or it's free with the $35 order. I do have a bulk order going in tomorrow morning. So if you wanna jump in on that, uh, you can let me know about that. So it is an in-person class, so COVID regulations are in effect um, for that, and it's between 7 and 9 p.m. on the 24th. And then I do have um, October specialty class is um, in the events page. We will be doing shaker cards. So it will be three shaker cards at night. It's Thursday, October the 7th from 7 to 9 p.m. The class fee is $28. It does include $20 in product um, so that you'll be able to go home and make some additional shaker cards. But we will be making three cards that night. They will not be all Christmas related. So if you're seeing this and thinking it's too early for Christmas, don't worry <laughs> because they won't be all Christmas related. Um, the RSVP date for that, I'm just checking my calendar. I meant to look at this is thursday september 23rd so if you're interested in that class you need to let me know um, by then so that i have enough time to order the supplies for that class okay so tonight um the stamps that actually i'm going to show you is featured in the celebration brochure so if you remember celebration has been going on for august and into september it will end september 30th so you only have a few weeks left to take advantage of celebration and the opportunity to earn free product with every 60 and $120 order. So this brochure is chock full of Christmas and non-Christmas products that you can earn for free. These are exclusive. They're not available in any of the other catalogs and you can choose your rewards free when you place a qualifying order. So actually, the stamps that we're going to work with tonight is this one. This is the Delicate Dahlias, and hopefully I'm pronouncing that properly. Um, and Dahlias are, I believe they're a late summer blooming flower. 
Um, and so I actually know a couple people who have a big dahlia garden um, that they tend to and spend a lot of time doing. So I thought this wasn't a stamp set, honestly, that I was going to be interested in. And then once I saw people using it, I thought, no, <laughs> that's a great stamp set. It is um, images. I should really just show you the, the stamp set. This is a stamp set here. There's images. It's got distinctive stamps in it, which means it's got this great detail. When you stamp it out, you see all that intricate detail. So there are images as well as sentiments and there's um, a couple of different ones so um, it's got the sympathy one in it a thank you and then two um, two other sentiments so it's a great year-round stamp set and when i looked at it i remember seeing this stamp technique called well honestly i didn't know what it was <laughs> what it was called so i had to look it up on pinterest it is called triple time stamping um, and I'm going to show you one of the cards that I created using that technique. But I will show you a couple of other samples that I did using this technique and using this stamp set. So here are a couple that I did. So the idea with the triple time stamping is that you have three pieces that you're stamping on all at the same time. So you stamp all the pieces of paper at the same time, and then you use, um, you mat the, the pieces with colors of cardstock in between, and you get this great triple layered um, effect on your cards. So this one I strictly did with three rectangles on top of each other. And I stamped over this, the color scheme of this one is one of the new in colors, Fresh Frieza. I'll grab that here for you so you can see. So it's this color here. This is one of our new in colors um, that came out in May. And then Coastal Cabana. So I did this one here and I used the distinctive stamp. So these are these ones here um, with all that great detail. And then another one I used using the same type of stamps. So again, using the distinctive stamps, I actually cut these a little different. So this big one here is a, a basic card front. It's five and a quarter by four inches. Then I cut a square three and a quarter inches by three and a quarter inches. And then this was just one of the pieces that I had left, <laughs> starting with um, a half sheet of cardstock. So the measurements really don't matter. You can pick any three different um, pieces that you want and then you mat them. This one I actually used a 1 8 inch mat on it and this first one I used a 1 quarter inch matting. So it depends on how big. I think I decided that I liked the bigger uh, matting because you get more very or more contrast in the colors. This one I did tie some ribbon. So this um, this color scheme here actually I find it's better if I do this to focus in. So this is Rich Razzleberry and one of our new in colors, the Soft Succulent. So if you've seen that before. Uh, so I used those two colors together to create this one and then I used a piece of the Open Weave Ribbon in the Soft Succulent for that and Soft Suede um, using the Sympathy Sentiment. So tonight I'm actually going to show you a different variation of that card. So there's this one here. So again, three different pieces of paper, but they're angled differently. And this color scheme was actually inspired by Mary Fish. Um, if you follow her on her blog or on Pinterest, she used this color scheme in a card this week. And I really loved the Misty Moonlight with the Sahara Sand. That's a color combination I haven't used before. So I took that color scheme and actually she used it with this stamp set in a different layout. So I took that color scheme and inspiration and turned it into the triple time stamping for this card. So this is what we're gonna work on tonight. So I'm gonna give you all the measurements so that you have them if you wish to recreate this card at home. Again, you can use it with any stamp set. Um, I would say the bigger the images, the better because then you can see them on all three layers. If you had a small, stamp it wouldn't you wouldn't get the image on all three pieces which i think is the important part so that's the great thing about the delicate dahlias stamp set it has these large floral images that work wonderful with this 
Stampin' Tent technique. So Delicate Dahlias you can earn for free. Again, it's part of the celebration product offering. So this stamp set is free with a $120 order. You just choose that if you're shopping online or if you um, want to do a part of our bulk order tomorrow, you can let me know and, and that you could choose this with a $120 order. Also wanna say, um, if you are ordering online and you use this host code for September, um, you will actually be part of my monthly loyalty reward. And so what that means is anytime you place, if you place a $50 order um, in September, you receive this month's loyalty reward. And this month is reward is the 12 by 12 shimmer vellum in gold. Um, and this is actually a new product in the mini catalog here. Um, if you've seen the shimmer vellum in the annual catalog, it's the same idea, but it's in um, this new gold color. So I think that's really fun. So that would be your reward with a $50 order. And then remember, if you increase your order to $60, you're earning a free product for celebration. Okay, so I'm going to put this aside. So for this card, I'm using the outline of the Dahlia flower and then I'm using the you inspire me greeting from this stamp set so I have my measurements here I'll bring them into view and then I will go over the various pieces so that you can see how I've referenced them here so again my color scheme is Sahara sand and misty moonlight so we're working with a basic card base which is eight and a half by five and a half squared at four and a quarter I have my three pieces of Sahara sand cardstock that we're going to stamp on and they're what I refer to as the layers. So the biggest layer is our basic card front um, piece. It is five and a quarter by four inches. The second one is four and a half by three and one quarter inches. And the smallest one is three and three quarters by two and a half. Again, it doesn't matter what size you choose. Um, as long as they layer on top of each other in some fashion. And then we have the matting. Yes, we have matting. <laughs> so you don't need the matting for the biggest one because your card base is gonna create that mat um, for it. But for these ones, I've cut them one inch wider and one inch longer. So the biggest one is four and three quarters by three and a half and that's going to map together like that and then for this one it is four by two and three quarters so they're going to map like that and then i started with a full sheet of the misty moonlight card stock and what i ended up with after i cut these pieces was this piece here this is what i'm going to use for my label uh, for the sentiment. So you're just using a scrap piece um, of cardstock that's big enough for the label that you want to use for your sentiment. Okay, so I'm going to put the pieces of matting and basically I'm going to put all of the Misty Moonlight cardstock aside because I want to stamp on my three layers of Sahara sand. So I found with this stamp set because this stamp is so large you really do need um, to use a piercing mat to get a nice crisp image. So this piercing mat, if you're wondering, never mind that sticker there. Um, this is available in the annual catalog. It does not come with the grid paper. It is a foam pad. And then I just took one of our pieces of grid paper and I cut it down to size. And that just gives me um, a scrap backing so when I'm stamping on it I'm not stamping on the piercing mat itself this gives a nice cushion so if you're have, having trouble stamping with the larger stamps this seems to help um, get a crisp image and a full image so um, again this is available in the annual catalog I will post below this video the item number with the link so that you know where to find it in case um, you've never seen this before in the annual catalog. So I'm going to stamp on that. Now I'm going to layer my three pieces. So it doesn't really matter how you layer them, but I'm, I'm going to follow this pattern. So I did 
the biggest piece sort of straight up and down. Then I'm going to slant or tilt this second piece to the left. And then I'm going to put this one on top and tilt it to the right. Okay, so I've got my three layers all together. Um, you could put a little washi tape or even post-it tape in a section that you don't think you're going to stamp. Um, I can show you what that looks like. So you're wondering if you're wondering why I'm talking about post-it tape, this is what I'm referring to. It's the labor, labeling and cover-up tape. Um, because I did find when I was doing some of these cards that the, the papers did shift when I tried to lift up. So I'm going to put this here, assuming I'm not going to stamp in this area. Okay. And so I am stamping with the large outline and I am using Misty Moonlight ink, which is the coordinating color for this uh, cardstock that we're using. And this is quite a large stamp. So you could stamp normally like this, or you could turn the stamp over and ink it up this way. Okay. So I actually find with the bigger stamps, I find it's easier to get good ink coverage stamping this way. Um, and so you kind of want to figure out what your pattern is going to look like. So I want a full flower here. So I'm going to stamp there. I'm using firm pressure and lifting up. And it's okay where, you know, you see some blank space because don't forget, we're going to have uh, a piece of cardstock in between. So it doesn't matter if it doesn't line up right on the edges. I'm just going to, sorry if I'm making you ill by <laughs> my zooming. Um, so if you're seeing what I'm referring to, there's kind of a blank space in between the layers and that's perfectly fine because you're going to have that cardstock in between. Okay. And then really I'm just working around the outsides until I've got my whole paper covered. So again, make sure you're using firm pressure because you are stamping through three different pieces of paper. And again, I'm okay with that void there. Uh, because we're going to have cardstock in between and it's okay that you are stamping off. So this is going to get a little crazy up here because I'm going to be stamping off the edge and then just a little bit here. And there we go. So you can see, I really love this co color combination um, with the Misty Moonlight and the Sahara sand with the stamp um, kind of reminds me of denim and so when I saw Mary Fish's card I just knew I had to try this color combination so now that I'm finished with that I can remove the post-it tape and none of this has to stay together so you just completely remove it and we're gonna get this foam pad out of the way and then we will start um, we can start assembling our card. I'm actually first going to cut the die and do the sentiment first. So the dies I'm using tonight for the, for the label are the scallop contour dies. These have been extremely popular, popular in the annual catalog because they have these great stitched frames. So I'm using the smallest one here and it's got these cute little um, dots that it cuts out in the die. And I'm going to take my scrap of Misty Moonlight. And I'm going to grab my machine here. So I'm just going to zoom out a bit. And these dies will fit in the mini machine. So if you have a mini machine on your craft desk, this will definitely work. So I'm using the standard stamp and cut emboss machine. I am using the base plate, the cutting plate, and one of the clear plates. I'm putting my Misty Moonlight cardstock on top and then the die with the kind of the cutting edges down because that's how it's going to cut the paper. Put a clear plate on top and then crank that. Okay. Put my machine aside. And then we have the die cut out and it cut out all those little fun dots. And now the sentiment that I've chosen is you inspire me. 
and I am going to heat emboss it with white embossing powder. So if you've never seen heat embossing before, you take Versamark ink, which is sort of a sticky ink because this is what you need to adhere the embossing powder. Stamping that up. I'm just gonna stamp right in the middle of that frame. This is white embossing powder. Let me just double check. I have white and I have clear and I've labeled them on the bottom so that, so that I'm not confused as to which one I'm using. So I'm just sprinkling the powder over top and then tapping off the excess, okay? And you cannot just leave the embossing powder like this. You do need to heat set it um, and so I've got my heat tool here. The heat tool at the end is quite hot, and so you do want to make sure you're not touching the paper closely while you're heat embossing it. Um, so that's why I'm using this spoon to hold my piece of paper. So just uh, excuse the noise for a bit. Just setting my powder. There we go. Perfect. Okay. And you'll see the powder change from a matte finish to more of a shiny finish. So I'm not sure if this will focus on here. I have trouble um, with this camera focusing. Sometimes it will focus for me and sometimes it will not. No, it doesn't want to focus. Okay. Oh, you can see it down there. Okay. So we have that ready. We're going to put that aside and we're going to start assembling our card. So I'm taking the basic card base. I'm folding it in half on the score line and using my bone folder to burnish that edge. And for adhesive, um, I'm using the stamp and seal. And this is what I'm going to use to glue all of my layers together. So first I'm going to mat um, all of my pieces. So this one's going to go on the card base. I don't need to do that. But these other pieces, I'm going to use the stamp and seal to adhere them to each other. So this one here. I'm just going to mount it right in the middle. And then the same with this one. And then I'm going to adhere this to the front of the card. And I just want to think about how I did this. Okay. So when I did, I'll be honest, when I did my sample card <laughs> this afternoon, I ended up with a card that opened like this, which perhaps could work, but I was a little irritated with that. So that's why I thought I would double check to make sure it's going the right side up. Okay. So I've got that one down and these layers, I'm also going to glue right on. I'm not using Stampin' Dimensionals in between. So I'm going to put Stampin' Seal on this one. And what I'm trying to do is line it up so that we come together where the voids kind of in between the paper were. So as long as I'm doing that, then we should be good to go. So it doesn't have to be exact, but if I zoom in here, you can see where your eye takes you to complete that image, having that border in the middle. So you can see that the images do line up. And then this one here I'm going to lay on top, but before I do that, I'm going to tie some of the linen thread around. So I've got this linen thread. This is available in the annual catalog. It's a great um, twine to use on neutral or even bright colored cards because it is neutral. It will go with almost anything. I really like it with the Sahara sand. So I'm going to wrap that around twice and I'm leaving the, the ends long enough that I can tie a bow. So I'm actually going to cut a little extra off 
And then I'm tying the bow to the very left hand side of this piece. I don't use any adhesive. If you find you get a lot of shifting with your bows, tying them this way, you can put a mini glue dot underneath the knot of your bow and that will help it stick. Um, but I'm just gonna take my stamp and seal and glue this right on. And again, I'm doing the same thing. I'm trying to line up the ends or the edges so that we complete, complete this um, look here. So there we go. Hopefully this will, I need to put it down here and zoom. Okay. So you can see there that the image um, appears complete. We just have this small mat in between and you get that great contrast in the colors. Okay, and then the last piece on this is to add our sentiment. So be, because I wanna add a bit of dimension to this card, I am going to put some dimensionals on it. I'm gonna zoom this back out so that you can see the measurements of the card in case you're looking for that. So I'm just going to use two Stampin' Dimensionals on here. And then that's just, I just layered that on top of the linen thread. So that is tonight's card. I hope that you enjoyed the triple time stamping technique with the Delicate Dahlia stamp set. Again, this is only available during our celebration offering and so it will only be available until September 30th or while supplies last and you can earn it free with a $120 order. If you are, have any questions about any of the products I've used tonight, please let me know. Um, this will be featured on my blog. So if you wanna go back and look at the dimensions um, or look at the products I used tonight, you can go to jennascraftingstudio.com. Um, otherwise, if you have any questions, let me know. And I hope you have a great night and hope you have a great week. Take care, everyone. Bye now.